Here's a question from Janice in Sudbury, Massachusetts. She says, I hear about click tracks and rhythm tracks. What are they? I don't know what these track things are. I hear about them. Why do we need a separate rhythm section track without singers and click tracks? What are those and why? So a click track is, um, it's like a metronome. If you don't know what a metronome is, then it's just something that keeps time and keeps the same tempo. You know, I, I used to teach piano to young children and there's something about this. I would do that for the whole page that they were playing because there's something about that that's compelling and it helps them keep the rhythm. We're working with professionals, right? Now that we're in a studio and ideally we're not recording eight-year-olds. However, um, it's very rare to find a human that has perfect rhythm. You know, maybe the drummer for Rush, maybe, okay? I saw a really cool mashup of videos where that drummer is playing different shows throughout the years and they are the same tempo. That might be the only human metronome that actually ever existed. Most humans, when they get excited, they're gonna push the tempo, they're gonna make it faster. You know, maybe, maybe the band, um, they rehearsed it at a certain tempo and they get in there and man, they had a party the night before and they are tired and they are gonna drag that song and not even know it because the internal state of a human is going to affect how they play the music. So for example, when I, when I would play with my band, I play with the drummer first and he says, start the song. And I start the song and I play it a little bit for him. And he says, okay, I got it. And he was taking the tempo so he could write the tempo down and record it. So no matter what happens, no matter what environment in, whether you know I'm tired or we're excited, wherever we are, we have the tempo that we wanted and it's set. So the click track, um, and typically it'll be in the, in the headphones of everybody that's playing, that just keeps everybody on tempo. So, you know, there, there's another use for it. Let's say that, um, you know, that band did three or four takes of a song and the first verse and chorus of the second take, it's perfect. And that's exactly what you want. And then the rest of the song, it falls apart. What the engineer and the producer might do is they keep that first verse and chorus and they listen through the other takes and they'll cut it and they'll put it together so the take is the best that it can be. Well, if the band didn't use a click track and they varied in tempo at all, which they will, then you don't have that option anymore because as soon as you cut a piece from another take and try and put it together, the listener is going to know, <laughs> you know, all the notes might be the same, but the listener is going to register that the tempo has changed very suddenly. So that click track is really something that, and you know, when, when I work in the studio, I actually don't like it in my ear because I feel like it affects um, the emotion and the feeling that I'm trying to put into something, but I make my drummer put it in his ear and I play with my drummer. So there are, you know, definitely different ways to use a click track, but I'd say unless you are just a band that is really, really set and you know that you're going to take your song and play it all the way through and none of the humans are going to make any human mistakes, which does happen, you know, that, that exists in the world. Um, click track, super useful. So the other part of your question, why do we need a separate rhythm section track without singers. I, th I think what you're trying to ask is um, why, why do you need the drums to be tracked separately somewhere else um, away from the singers? I think that's what you're asking. Um, there's what you would call mic bleed and so whenever, and drums especially are I mean, if they're in the room, they're going to get in everybody's mic because because they just drums get everywhere. <laughs> so typically, you know, if you're if you are 
recording more than one instrument and drums are a piece of that, you're probably going to isolate the drums and put them in what's called an isolation booth. And so, you know, especially for singers, um, you want the drums and the singers to be probably in separate rooms so the drums aren't bleeding into the singer's mic and the singer isn't going to bleed into the drummer's mic. So if you want to re-record anything, if that singer listens to their, to their voice and they go, oh, I've done that so much better, you know, they can, they can go back and redo it. Um, but it, it is pretty important to have the rhythm section separate um, so that they don't just get all over the place in all the mics. Thank